Greetings class, this is your teacher, Brian Jump. In this video, I'm going to go over microphones, perhaps the most important tool to music production. Here's the point. Differentiating between the various microphone varieties and using them effectively are necessary skills for an audio engineer. So after watching this video, you should be able to define microphones, differentiate between dynamic and condenser microphones, summarize and explain microphone pickup patterns, apply proper microphone placement in a recording session, and list the four basic microphone techniques. Microphones are transducers, which are devices that convert one form of energy into another. In the case of a microphone, it's converting mechanical sound energy into electric energy. Now it turns out that there's not a million different ways to do this. There appear to be just two, a transducer is either operating via electromagnetic induction or variable capacitance. So inside the capsule of a microphone is the transducing element. And it is operating either via electromagnetic induction or variable capacitance. Here's what those things are. Electromagnetic induction or just magnetic induction is a physical phenomenon resulting from the interaction between a conductor in a magnetic field. Usually the conductor is a coil of copper wire. So you pass a coil of copper wire through a magnetic field and you'll get electricity or what's called an electromotive force, which is voltage or the potential for the water-like flow of electrons known as electricity. So put simply, magnetic induction is a process that creates a voltage. So you take a magnet plus a conductor plus movement and you'll get electricity. The physical phenomenon of variable capacitance can also convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Capacitance is the ability of certain materials to store an electrical charge by way of their physical arrangement relative to each other. So the electrical device that operates on this principle is known as a capacitor. A capacitor positions two parallel plates, which are thin, flat, metallic sheets that are wired up with battery and placed in close proximity to one another. And the plates maintain a static voltage. If you have a fixed plate and one that can move, uh, the one that moves varies the capacitance of the system and initiates an electromotive force or initiates a voltage. So here we have each of the two transducer types in schematic form. The one on the left here is a microphone that works off of electromagnetic induction. And you see that we have the north and south poles of a magnet and in between, we have a coil of copper wire. And the coil of copper wire is affixed to a thin sheath of material called a diaphragm that moves back and forth with sound pressure variation. So the coil of copper is being pushed back and forth between the magnetic field and produces a voltage as a consequence. On the right here, we have a microphone that works off of variable capacitance. And we see that there are two thin plates placed in close proximity to one another. And one of the thin plates is actually the diaphragm, so it moves back and forth, thereby varying the capacitance of the system and producing a voltage. Here's the actual transducing element of a microphone that works off of electromagnetic induction. We see that we have this coil of copper, which is this red circle here, that's affixed to this uh, thin sheath of material, right? It sort of looks like cellophane or plastic. And the whole apparatus is placed between magnets, thereby producing voltage. And here is a capacitor style transducing element. Notice that we have these metallic disks. So there's one on this side and on the other side is another. And they are wired together. And this is a capacitor style microphone that produces a voltage when one of those thin metallic plates moves and the other one does not. The capacitor style microphones require a power source, either from a battery or from the mixing board itself in the form of phantom power which is great, it's the one form of music technology that sounds totally made up. 
In any case, you just press the phantom power button on your mixing board and it powers your microphone. Okay, let's take a look at the differences between the two types of microphone. Okay, the one on the left here, which is typically called a dynamic microphone, works on electromagnetic induction. And the one on the right here, which is typically called a condenser microphone, works off of variable capacitance. The dynamic microphone has no power requirements. It's just working automatically. The condenser microphone, on the other hand, requires a power source. The dynamic microphones are very durable, and the condenser microphones are very fragile. Dynamic microphones, unless you're right on top of them, produce a somewhat dull and undetailed sound. The condenser microphones, on the other hand, produce a brilliant and highly detailed character of audio. The dynamic microphones are really only good at close range, and the condenser microphones are good at close range or at a distance. So since they are better at capturing highly detailed audio, the condenser microphones are often found in the studio, and the dynamic microphones are often found on stage. Now you'll find one or the other in either arena, but generically speaking, the condenser microphones are in the studio and the dynamic microphones are on the stage. Okay, as for their names, the microphone that works off of electromagnetic induction is known as a dynamic mic. Sometimes it's called a moving coil mic. And the one that works off of variable capacitance is known as a condenser mic, which is a bit of a misnomer, a holdover from the past, which is stuck. It's actually a capacitor microphone, but no one on earth refers to them as capacitor microphones. So if you go to a store and you're shopping for this variety of microphone, you'll have to ask for a condenser mic. Okay, next up, let's take into account how a microphone listens, which is to say the direction of its sensitivity. This is referred to as a polar response pattern. So there are three general categories of polar response pattern. They are omnidirectional, bidirectional, and unidirectional. So on the right here, we have a schematic of each. An omnidirectional pickup pattern, this one here, picks up equally well in all directions, right? Imagine the center of the microphone capsule surrounded by a ping pong ball, surrounded by a baseball, surrounded by a softball, surrounded by a volleyball, surrounded by a beach ball, etc. Just an ever expanding orb of sensitivity. The bidirectional microphone pickup patterns listen equally well in two hemispheres of sensitivity. So they're listening left or right or up or down, but they reject sounds from the sides. And finally, we have the unidirectional pickup pattern, which is the most common, and it listens in just one hemisphere of sensitivity. So basically what you point your microphone at is what you hear. Unidirectional microphones are by far the most common. That's because they are the most practical. Their practicality stems from their ability to pick up sounds coming from one direction and reject sounds coming from all others. So they're really useful in a recording studio or if you have multiple musicians set up in the same room. So if you look at the picture of the microphones in front of these amplifiers, this one is pointing at this amp and this one here is pointing at this amp and it will capture the one it's pointing at and reject the sounds from behind and from the sides. So it's good at creating isolation. The unidirectional pickup pattern is so common that it has its own specialized name, which is cardioid. So this word cardioid, like cardio, that's because the pickup pattern is shaped like a heart, like the organ of the heart, not a Valentine's Day heart. Sort of looks like a kidney bean to me, but it's called cardioid. Now with some manipulation of air pressure behind the diaphragm, the cardioid pickup pattern can be tightened up and turned into supercardioid and hypercardioid, both of which are very focused. Those super and hypercardioid patterns are often found in shotgun microphones and parabolic microphones. So shotgun microphones, like 
what this guy is holding on his camera, are often used in the field for collecting uh, audio with film or video. They are very directional and will pick up sounds from wherever you're pointing. A parabolic microphone, what this guy is holding here, is a shotgun microphone, but now the microphone is pointed into the apex of a parabolic dish. So this person's microphone is aimed inward into the apex of this dish. And the dish itself acts like a giant earlobe collecting all the sounds. This type of microphone is extremely sensitive, especially at a distance. It allows you to capture the banter of football huddles or the tweets of birds way up in the rainforest canopy. For most musical purposes, the basic cardioid pattern is best because it's very sensitive in the direction that it's pointed and it rejects sounds from the sides and the back. So let me demonstrate with this microphone here. I'm right in its pickup pattern and it's likely very sensitive. Now I'm around to the side and it's less sensitive. And now I'm all the way behind and it's probably less sensitive still. And now I'm coming all the way back around again to the focus of the pickup pattern and it's very sensitive. Okay, next we'll talk about the four basic microphone techniques. So when it comes time to set up your microphone and play some music, you'll know what to do. So the first type of miking is called close miking. And this is whenever your microphone is less than a foot away from your sound source. So if you have your microphone right in front of the sound hole of your guitar, that's close miking. Now this gives you a very detailed and brilliant character of audio. It will have all the nuance, all the string sounds, every flub will be accurately captured with close miking. It's a very useful technique, especially in the studio. Oftentimes the singers and all the instrumentalists are being miked with a close mic technique. Uh, distance miking is also very common. Now this is whenever you're three or more feet away from your sound source and it doesn't get the highly nuanced character of audio that close miking gets, but it has a nice blend. So if you have several instruments playing together at once, it might be best to mic them at a distance so that their blend is better captured. Oftentimes in a studio, close and distant miking are used in conjunction with one another. A specialized type of miking is called ambient miking, and this is miking the room itself. So if you have a band playing in a hall, or if you have an orchestra set up on a stage, you might want to mic the room instead of miking the instruments themselves. That way you get an interaction of the sound in the room. And this is a good way to add natural reverb instead of adding it artificially. So ambient miking is basically a hyper form of distance miking. You're at such a distance that you stop hearing the instruments themselves and you start hearing the instruments interacting with the space. And the last type of miking is called accent miking. And this is a specialized form of close miking. So accent miking is close miking. It's just close miking in the context of distance miking. So if you have a band miked at a distance, say you have a jazz band, and then it comes time for the soloist to stand out from the band, then that person steps up to the accent microphone and blows their horn or sings right in. And that way it soars above the sound of the orchestra or the band. So close, distance, ambient, and accent. Usually in the studio, or if you are recording at home, you're doing a lot of close miking. Close miking is definitely the most common of the four. Okay, here's a summary. There are two types of microphone, dynamic microphone and condenser microphone. Dynamic microphones operate via electromagnetic induction, are durable, good at close range, and produce a slightly dull, undetailed sound. Condenser microphones operate via variable capacitance, require phantom power or battery power, are good at close range or to distance, and produce a highly detailed, brilliant sound. There are three basic microphone pickup patterns, omnidirectional, bidirectional, and unidirectional. The unidirectional pickup pattern, by the way, is usually called cardioid. And there are four basic microphone techniques, close, distance, ambient, and accent. Okay, let's take a quiz. 
What are microphones? A. Transponders, B. Transducers, C. Condensers, or D. Oscillators? Of course, the answer is B. Microphones are transducers. Okay, next question. Which type of microphone requires power from the mixing console? A. Dynamic, B. Cardioid, C. Condenser, or D. Moving coil? The answer is C. Condenser microphones require power from the mixing console. What device converts one form of energy into another? A. Transducer, B. Transistor, C. Resistor, or D. Converter? The answer is transducer. Microphones are transducers because they convert one form of energy into another. Which type of microphone is good at close range and at a distance? A. Dynamic, B. Ribbon, C. Laser, or D. Condenser? The answer is condenser microphones are good at a distance or at close range. Dynamic microphones, on the other hand, begin to lose detail and cut off the high range if you get too far away from your sound source. Next question. Dynamic microphones are also known as blank microphones. A, cardioid, B, voltage, C, maximum strength, or D, moving coil? The answer is D. Dynamic microphones are also called moving coil microphones because they have a coil of copper affixed to their diaphragm, hence the name. The physical phenomenon of variable capacitance occurs when A. Phantom power is introduced to the circuit. B. Space age polymers are buried in zinc mines. C. A magnetic field is perturbed by a conductor for the purposes of sound capture. Or D. Thin metallic plates are wired together with a battery and placed in close range to one another. Of course, the answer is D. That's what a condenser microphone does. Which of the following is the most sensitive? A, ribbon mic, B, condenser mic, C, dynamic mic, or D, moving coil mic? The answer is B, condenser microphones are very sensitive. Next question. Which microphone technique captures the scale and scope of the performance space? A, close, B, accent, C, middle side, or D, ambient? The answer is D. Ambient. Ambient miking captures the sound of the performance space. Next question. What is the physical phenomenon that results from the interaction of a conductor and a magnetic field? A. Electromagnetic induction. B. Variable capacitance. C. Voltage induction. Or D. Amperage. The answer is A. Electromagnetic induction. If a microphone has active circuitry, then this power source must be engaged. A, capacitor power, B, power assist, C, phantom power, or D, magnum power. They all sound equally unlikely, but the answer is C, phantom power. That's how you power a condenser microphone. Next question, this type of microphone is very durable. A, condenser, B. Electret, C. Ribbon, or D. Dynamic? The answer is D. Dynamic mic. Now, we didn't talk about electret or ribbon microphones in this presentation, but ribbon microphones are also very fragile, and electret microphones, which are also known as lapel mics, and you see them during TV interviews. It's a type of condenser microphone. It's also fragile, but since it's so small, it's not as likely to break. But dynamic microphones are very durable. I don't recommend it, but you can just throw them down the stairs and walk to the bottom of the stairs, put it on a microphone stand, and it'll probably be okay. Okay, last question. Which microphone pickup pattern listed below listens in one direction? A, omnidirectional, B, hypercardioid, C, shallow lobe sensitivity, or D, longitudinal cardioid? The answer is B, hypercardioid. It's a specific kind of cardioid microphone that has a very focused pickup pattern that listens in one direction. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you got something from this.